This is the fourth class in the Mach 3 overview series, and we're going to be talking about the menu items at the very top today and just a couple other things to, to kind of round out the tour of this program. So starting with the file menu, um, you've got some of the obvious things that you have in most programs, like open project that you've previously saved and shut down. Uh, the second option is merge a project, and this is pretty handy if maybe you've altered some patterns in another project and you want to use those, you didn't save them as patterns, so you can't import them as patterns, but you want to access them to use in a current project. So I can actually click on Merge Project, and I'll just open up this t-shirt one, and the patterns will be available in the project that I'm working on, so I can then use them or adapt them or do whatever I need to do. So you may find that handy. I'm going to control Z to undo that. And then the next option is new project. So you'll do this anytime you're starting a new quilt. Or you can also do that here with the little plus on the your projects that are open. That will open up a new project and allow you to input the measurements for the new quilt. So the pattern pad. The fourth option here, if I click on that, it opens my pattern pad and I can search for things. Uh, it's just an, a duplicate way to get to the, the pattern pad. Many of the tools in this top menu are duplicates of what you have elsewhere. So save project, obvious. Um, as you set up a project, you probably want to save it. It does not auto save, so it can be difficult to recover if you have shut a project down without saving it. But once you do save a project, it does start auto saving. So if you forget and shut things down, you can get back to it as long as you've saved the product initially. So we try to remember to save a project as soon as I set it up and start on it. If you want to save it elsewhere or save it as a different name because you've got some slight variations, you would use the save project as. And then if you have a pattern selected that you want to, um, let me come to my transform. Maybe I've altered this pattern and like the size and scale so I can come to it and say save pattern and save it here with some comments on it on how I altered it. So that could be handy for you. Print patterns is available if you wanted to come in and choose a pattern to print it would print it off on your, your printer. But there's no need to do this if you're using my Evernote. Um, we have images of all the patterns in Evernote that um, are also tagged in that. So that's free to you. If you haven't received an invite from my notebooks, you can certainly request that and I'll take care of it and we'll get you access to it so you don't have to repeat the effort. But if you wanted to print for a pattern to send to a customer, that would certainly be a way to do it. There's import, and you're probably familiar with import patterns to bring in to um, that you've purchased. And you can also import a project, although I'm not sure what the difference is between this versus just opening a project. And you can import chimes. And so if I click on that, it gives me a list of the chimes that are on my system. And I would assume that you could go out and download chimes from sources online, but my guess is that those might be um, potential sources of viruses so I don't know if I'd recommend that or not but these are actually already loaded on your system so there's no need to import them we'll talk about those in just a minute and then export you can export a selection a group of patterns or you can export from the library um, you know maybe if you wanted to alter a pattern in a, a secondary um, software you could export it as a DXF take it into another program and then bring it back in is a new pattern. You can delete patterns or projects and I want to talk about that for just a second because um, I've kind of learned that if you delete patterns off your system and then you go try to reinstall them from the same location say on your thumb drive it will show that they've already been imported and you can't bring them back in. So um, if you delete them you know one workaround would be just to save them to a different folder and grab them out of that separate folder. So you just want to be a little bit careful with that. You can assign tags and if I click on that it brings up my pattern library and I can choose an item and then add a tag to it. It shows over here what I've selected. Apply. So 
Now if I click on that, that new tag will show up down here. So recent projects are the ones that you've had open most recently. This project recovery is something that you might want to check into. So if I click on that, if for instance I'm trying to get back to a previous version of a project that I've saved a couple of times, you can do that here. You cannot get back to a project that you have not saved. So remember, as soon as you start your project, save it and then it'll take care of the auto saves. But if I come in here and want to look at one of the projects and I had saved it a couple of different times, I can get back to a previous save or the latest save here. So that might be helpful if you kind of really botch up a project and, and need to get back to an earlier version of it. And of course when you shut the program down you're going to choose Quit Autopilot. And we talked a little bit about this in last week's class that if you're using the standalone version of the program, the simulator, um, you can sync that to this program and uh, Susan Smith covered this a little bit in her, in her simulator video that we had posted earlier. So that's it for the file menu. Now to go through the edit menu options. These are available like many things in several different places. So you've got undo, redo, copy, and delete, which are also here in your tools uh, um, on your screen and in your right click menu. Those are the first things that come up. And I just want to remind you again that these are your keyboard shortcuts. So if you hold down the control key and Z, it will undo whatever you just did and redo, copy, and delete. So if you become familiar with those, those are used in many different programs and are pretty consistent from program to program. So they can be pretty handy to, to uh, be able to type in quickly and have an effect. And I wanted to mention um, you have on your screen your PDF of your help menu, your M-Series help menu. And if I click on that, since I've already got it open, it's right here. Um, you can come in here and search for different tools and functions. It's a very good document and you'd find it very helpful if you want to take a look. But on page 94 of the current version of it, here is a full list of the keyboard shortcuts that are available to you in this program. So you may want to print this off and, and keep it near your machine just to, to help you remember it. The rest of the edit menu are the same as the tools in your toolbar across the top here. So um, just another way to access that, those same set of tools. Moving on to the view menu, uh, you can zoom in here, which is also available up here if you want to zoom in. And zoom out, needle view is going to actually trace the pattern um, as the machine is stitching it out, like your screen is attached to the, the needle. And I, early on when I first got my machine, mistakenly chose this and, and had a hard time figuring out how to get out of it. So something to, to try, see if you like it. Full view, of course, shows you the entire quilt. And the actual size gives you the scale, assuming that these are one inch on your screen, you can show a customer the actual scale of the quilting. The library offers you two choices to import patterns or assign tags, which again were also available here in import pattern and assign tags. So just a, a duplicate way to get to the same tools. And then in the settings, let's go over those. Um, if your sewing is off, clearly your machine um, is not going to stitch, but it will travel along the line of the stitching without firing stitches. So you want to make sure you haven't accidentally bumped that. So I've turned it back on. In the settings, the pause um, choice as configurable can be used if you're jumping between patterns. So I'm going to go down to that configurable and I'm going to change it to seven inches. So if I have less than seven inches between my patterns, it's just going to drag a thread and restart the next one. And so I was able to compute that seven inches by using my ruler tool, which we talked about in a previous video. So I click on the start of one and the start of the next. It tells me that those are six and a half inches. And so if I change that pause to not be effective unless there's more than six inches or seven inches in between these patterns, then it will just drag thread. Auto tie off um, will automatically do a tie off at the beginning or the end of your 
uh, stitching if you have it turned to on and that is set by your sew head so on your lightning stitch screen you can set that to a particular number of stitches we usually have ours at five and so at the beginning and end of patterns it would take five stitches in the same spot and so um, you may like this or, or you may not these other options are only available for use with the embroidery function so they will be grayed out unless you have the embroidery module and then high definition stitches I haven't really paid much attention to this it's on by default when you get your machine and there's some settings in here and my understanding of that is that it can allow the computer to alter the stitches between points so if you come up to a, a leaf tip um, and that's the point is less than one twelfth of an inch or whatever you have your machine set at then um, sometimes it'll skip that tip and you'll get a little bit of a rounded point but using that high dense or uh, high definition stitch option it will be better at placing the needle into that point so you may want to experiment with that a little bit and see you know it sometimes is um, dependent on the scale of your quilting so you it may or may not be useful to you The snap to grid options we discussed a lot in my drawing programs on uh, using the drawing features and so when it is off if I want to draw a line I can draw it anywhere or place a pattern or whatever it is that you're trying to do so I can go wherever I want if it is actually activated snap to grid on let me go back to line here and I want to draw then it's going to only snap no matter you know if I'm clicking in between these grid lines it's going to snap to the closest grid so um, that can be useful if you're trying to keep things aligned on the same horizontal line but you can end up fighting it if you don't realize that you had activated it so you'll come back up and tell that to go off let's talk about the bobbin notifications the um, we generally keep this off but this is certainly a tool that you may find useful but in order to explain it I have to kind of bounce between a couple different places so you'll notice that it says bobbin at 20 percent if you hover over that another pull down menu shows up that says none stop warning alarm warning message warning message and alarm and so you can program this or configure it to be what you want um, to warn you when the bobbin reaches 20 percent of being full 10 percent of being full or when it's actually at zero percent of being full and what being full represents is if you go into the help menu and go to diagnostics you'll see that there's a bobbin length feature right here and what you would have to do is to take a bobbin of a particular type of thread let's say you're using a Novatech and you could put any number in here 500 a thousand whatever you want you would run that bobbin until it runs empty and then you'd come back in and look at what this had counted down to and that would be your your bobbin counter for that particular thread so let's say it was at 200 so then you could come in here and change this to 200 and then go back in I'm going to say yes go back into your bobbin counter and our bobbin notifications and click at 20 that you want a warning alarm and so is that counted down and you got to what is that 40 is 20 percent um, it would give you a warning alarm and so you would know that the bobbin is running low we just find that we can kind of hear the machine when it's running low and we trust the thread brake sensors so this is kind of an unnecessary thing but it's certainly something you can keep track of I'm guessing that that measurement that 200 or 125 or whatever you end up putting in is yards and I want to just say that that's opposed to um, what we talked about last week where if I select this entire quilt there are some measurements here and the length is 10,000 this is linear inches of the actual stitch out so uh, it might be a little bit confusing I do know that I was speaking to Wonderfill the other day and we're ordering their pre-wound decobob bobbins and I think they said those are 220 yards so that's a given quantity you know exactly how much has gone on their bobbin so you could definitely use this this bobbin counter uh, when you buy pre-wounds if you would like 
Sewing chimes can be kind of fun. We we sort of use it as a practical joke on new customers. We'll come in and set these because they don't know that they're on their system. So if you come in here and say set chime, you can choose different chimes from in here. Um, some of them are quite long, so you probably want to do some preview. And let's say cow and bell. And say OK. Now if I come in and have the sewing chimes click to on, every time you come to the end of the row, it will move like that. And I want to warn you, because if you click this off, but don't go into set chime again, it will still move. So you want to make sure you you choose none if you want to take that off. So um, that was another thing that I wasn't sure how to do. And so our machines were moving and we couldn't stop them. Moving on with the chimes, you have one for when you place push pins, which would be very handy. Um, I wish that they had an option in here where it was just a really brief single ding. When I place push pins, a lot of times I'm doing them very close together and, and placing a lot of them. And most of these um, chimes are just too long. So uh, I don't use this, but if you have a hard time placing the push pins and not knowing whether or not you they they indeed were placed, you may want to activate one of these. So the pattern pad manager, if you click on that, brings up your pattern pads just like you have here. So you can add new ones, you can rename them, you can delete them um, from this manager uh, if you want to have several that kind of remain permanent on your screen. So we tend to just do it for the particular quilt and um, not worry about having a lot of pattern pads. But you could have a pattern pad for quick to sew patterns or quick to sew edge to edge or something like that and have the patterns already selected if, if you wanted to have that option for your customers. The top panel configuration are the icons which are shown up here at the top of the machine. So you can um, deactivate them if you don't want all of them, you don't use them, or you can choose some of the other frequently used items that are down on your toolbox to be permanently attached to the top of your screen even if your tools have been collapsed. So that is totally flexible for you to set up like you want. And then the adjust color option, you can come in and change your button colors there are already each different colors, even or you can choose to right click on it and do the same thing. But um, so you can pick those here or you can change the background color of everything on your screen, this this light blue. So I'll say apply and so it lighten it up a little bit. And if you want to restore it to the original settings, you can do that and say apply and they'll come back to the way it was set up when you got your machine. The sew head display is your crosshairs, so you can choose to have long crosshairs, which is what we like set. Um, it's easy to find your crosshairs if you're zoomed out on your screen, or you can choose the circle crosshair or the large circle crosshair. So you may or may not find that that helpful. I think that that's sort of a big area, so um, it's hard to kind of see where things are. So we actually just leave it on the long crosshairs. And then moving on in there, there's the grid labels that you can activate by turning it on. And that gives you a midpoint on your quilt and these increments of 4, 8, 12 inches. So you might find that useful when you're working on certain projects. Under the pattern display, um, you've got some choices. And this shows you the start and end at the both the start and the end. Let's go ahead and bring another pattern over here so you can see. So obviously we've got that check to, to show the start and the end of this pattern. And going back to the display choices, so I've got them set up to show both, but you can choose just the end or the start. And then the sew direction is the pink line when you do a, a resume. Um, after a thread break or, or stopping the, the stitch out, that's the little pink direction line. I wish it would make the, this where it could be darker. You could thicken it up because it's sometimes hard to see. Now the start point or start end point size, you can alter that to become 
larger if you want or smaller if you need to to size it down to get things to match up but the default setting is at 15. The group lines would show if you have some no sew lines like I showed earlier where these patterns are going to stitch without um, pausing in between there would be a line that would show between them if you've set it up that way. So the last couple of choices, sew zone, if you wanted to reset the sew zone, you could click on that. You can also access that down here from your menu that has the sew zone option. You'll receive a message that if you've already set it up, it's going to clear what has been set up for previous project. And then your quilt size, you can come in here to alter the, the quilt measurements. And the last thing is to add an image. And I covered this in the drawing videos pretty extensively on how to trace over an image and um, or bring it in and place patterns on it so I won't go through that right now but if you go back to the the drawing there were four videos on drawing um, I think that you'll find that this was adequately covered. Now to go through the help um, menu options their top two don't do anything you can see that they're grayed out online tutorials and how to. So these are not available yet, but hopefully this is something that we can look forward to down the road. And then there's the contact us if you need to find your phone number to reach ABM International ANOVA. Um, but do note that they say to call your dealer for assistance first. So we certainly expect that from our customers. Uh, give us a chance to resolve anything that you have or any questions and uh, save the, the time with the ANOVA people. Um, you know, maybe for some of the problems that the dealer can't resolve. So there's an about, which tells you the version of your software that you're running. And um, an update option, uh, you can use this or you can use the app updater on your screen. So it's easier just to launch the app updater here and update, keep things up to date. Um, then there's an activate features and so far the only feature that you can activate is the embroidery if you if you purchase the embroidery module. So this would launch you through um, installing that. And then I want to go over some of the diagnostic settings. So if you click this, it gives you some numbers. And on the first couple there is a question mark that will tell you what it is that you're adjusting. This comes in, I think I want to say at like 40. And so when you first get the machine, and you hit continue to start a pattern, the machine moves super slowly across the table. And the first thing we do is come in and take that from that lower number to 300. That way you don't wait all day as the machine moves like a turtle across the table. These two are for embroidery, um, the embroidery function. So I'm not gonna go over that in this video. I'll cover that in the embroidery module. Um, down here, some of the other functions that you can alter. These are the the motor tuning and I would suggest that you only mess with these if you're on the phone with either your dealer or ABM. So um, it can change the quality of the stitching if you're kind of monkeying around with stuff and so I think it's better um, to recommend that you do that with your dealer assistance. And then these are actually set on your um, lightning stitch screen. So your thread brake sensor, your tie offs and your stitches per inch that you can change them here and then it would alter the lightning stitch. And then this we talked about earlier at the bobbin length. All this other stuff don't worry about unless somebody tells you to. Um, this is your power assist we spoke about I think last week or the week before. Um, you can adjust some of these settings if you use the power assist and that, that sort of frees up the machine head to make it easier to move across the table with the belts on, but it can be really touchy. So. Um, you just want to experiment to, to find the sweet spot where that doesn't sort of take off on you. Um, some additional settings that you can adjust, I, we leave these at the default, honestly. So um, they seem to work out fine. And then these are your versions of software on your sew head and the autopilot software. You can restore to factory settings here. Uh, I'll go ahead and say close. And that pretty much covers the diagnostics. So calibration, um, you can come in, let me clear out of this and um, go to another project. So you're, if you go to actual size, these should measure roughly one inch on your screen. If not, you can use that 
to calibrate it to adjust this, but we find that the default is actually accurate enough that customers can have an idea of what the, the quilting is going to, to be size-wise. And then the final thing is encryption. And so this is only if you're using a particular designer. I think Kim Diamond of Sweet Dream Studio is the only one that does encryption. So you would have to go in here to configure that if you're using her patterns. So that is it for the top menu items. And um, I'll look forward to hearing from you guys on what you want me to cover next. So this was kind of a long video, but it wraps up pretty much every feature that is on your machine. So um, please contact us with any questions or any feedback that you might have.